Hoxus, the first Kushite dynasty of Egypt. Many people have went to school and they've learned that the 25th dynasty of Egypt was ruled by Kushites. But the 25th dynasty of Egypt was not the first Kushite dynasty of the Egyptians. The first Kushite dynasty of the Egyptians was the Hoxas. Many people have been taught that the Hoxas were, Kush were Semitic speakers, but in reality the Hoxas were not Semitic speakers. The Hoxas were Kushites. Who are the Kushites? In the ancient literature, the Proto-Dravidians, the Sigru people, are called Kushites. Using boats, the Kushites moved down ancient waterways, many now dried up to establish new towns in Asia and Europe after 3000 BC. The Kushites remained supreme around the world until 1400 to 1200 BC. During this period, the Hua, Chinese, and Indo-European speakers began to conquer the Kushites, whose cities and economies were destroyed as a result of a natural catastrophes which took place on the planet between 1400 and 1200 BC. Later, at the 500 AD, Turkish-speaking people began to settle parts of Central Asia. This is the reason behind the presence of the Kesh element in many place names in Asia, e.g. Kashgar, Hindu Kush, and Kosh. The Hindu Kush in the Rappan times had lapis lazuli deposits. The Afro-Greek writer Homer alluded to the two Kushite empires when he wrote, A race divided, whom the sloping rays, the rising and the setting sun surveys. The Greek traveler historian Herodotus claimed that he derived this information from the Egyptians. The Kushites were niger Congo speakers. The niger Congo speakers probably played an important role in the peopling of the Sahara. Drake et al. make it clear that there was considerable human activity in the Sahara before it became a desert. The Kushites in history were characterized as users of the bow and the arrow. Drake et al. provides evidence that the original settlers of this wet Sahara who used aquatic tool kits were Nilo-Saharan speakers. The authors also recognized another Saharan culture that played a role in the people in other deserts. This population hunted animals with bows and arrows. They are associated with the Onanian culture. The Onanian culture existed or began around 12,000 years ago. The Onanians were members of the Caspian population. There was continuity between the populations in the Maghreb and Southern Sahara, referred to as Capsians, ibero marusians and Mactoids. The Nigel Congo speakers are descendants of the Caspian population. Caspian people did not only live in Africa, they were also present in South Asia. Using craniometric data, research was made it clear that the Dravidian speakers of South India and the Indus Valley were primarily related to the ancient Caspian or Mediterranean population. The Havri Sastri maintained that the Caspian population was unified over an extended zone from Africa across Eurasia into South India. The original homeland of the Kushites and Niger Congo speakers was probably situated in Saharan highlands during the Yunnanian period. This is why the Egyptians often referred to the Kushites as a hill people. This is supported by the various meanings of Gardner's Egyptian sign N25. The N25 sign from Gardner's list of Egyptian signs, Shakash or Kesh, meant Kush. From the Sahara, the Kushite populations migrated into the Fezzan, now Valley in Sudan, as their original homeland became more and more arid. The Niger Congo speakers formerly lived in the highland regions of the Fezzan and Hagar until after 4000 BC. Originally hunter gatherers, the Proto-Saharan people developed an agro-pastoral economy which included the cultivation of millet and domestication of cattle and sheep. 
This was the ancient homeland of Dravidians, Egyptians, Sumerians, Mandi, and Elamite speakers. We call this part of Africa the Fertile African Crescent. We call these people the Proto-Saharans. The generic term for this group is in the ancient literature was Kushite. Origination of these diverse Kushite tribes in the ancient Sahara explains the analogy between the Bafsutralam languages as outlined in this figure. In the Egyptian literature, they were called Wawat, Taseti, Shek, Kash, Kesh, and Tehanu by the Egyptians. The major Congo inhabitants of the Fezzan were round-headed Africans. The cultural characteristics of the Fezzanis were analogous to the sea group culture items and people of Taseti and Wawat. The sea group people were the Proto-Saharans and Niger Congo speakers who occupied the Sudan and Fezzan region between 3700 to 1300 BC. The inhabitants of the Fezzan were called Temehu. The Temehu represent the proto niger speakers. The Temehus were organized into two groups, the Tehanu in the north and the Nehisi in the south. A Tehanu personage is depicted on an Amrathian period pottery vessel. Some Tehanu wore a pointed beard, phallic sheet, and feathers on their head. The Temehus are called the sea group people by archaeologists. The, sequel, the central Fazan was a center of sea group settlement. Kolak discussed in detail the presence of sea group culture traits in the central Fazan along with the cattle during the middle of the third millennium BC. The Kushites lived in Tosseti and Wawat. Europeans, when they first translated the Egyptian language, referred to Kush as Negro land. The first mention of Kush in Egyptian text was made by Winnie, an Egyptian administrator. Below is the Winnie text. In the Winnie text, Wawat kings were called Heke Kashut. Heke Kashut today is translated as King's Foreign. When Europeans originally translated Winnie's inscription using Gardner's Egyptian word list, the original meaning of Kash, Kash Kish was King's Negro Land. This interpretation of Shesh Kash Kish was an Eurocentric interpretation of N25 because there was no such place as Negro land, so the actual meaning was kings of Kush. The term Haki Kush, because it related to wide wide rulers, had been translated as rulers of Negro land. The Egyptian elements what, were added to Kush to make it plural and denote a nationality. The Wendy inscription makes it clear that the name Kush was made up of three N25 signs from Gardner's list of Egyptian signs. The N25 sign also represents Kosh, Kish, which equals Kush. This means that N25 represents the name Kosh, Kosh, for the ethnonym Kushite. The meaning of N25 as Kush and Kushite is obvious in the Haxos scarabs, where we see N25 as the people the Haxos kings ruled. The Kushites lived in Asia and Africa. Thus, Estrabo wrote that those who are in Asia and those who are in Africa do not differ from each other. Everyone who's written on the Haxos acknowledged that they were a mixed group of Asians that included Hurrians and Hadians. These people were not Semitic speakers, though. These people may be Kush. They appeared not to wear beards. The Haxos included both Kushites, Kush, beardless, and Asians with beards. The Asian Kushites settled Palestine and Anatolia. Some of the major Anatolian Kushite tribes were the Kashka and Hadi speakers, who spoke a non ai language called Katili. The gods of the Hadi people were Kashka and Kush. During the 5th dynasty of Egypt, 2563 to 2423, namely during the reign of Sahure, there is mention of the Tehanu people. Sahuri referred to the Tehanu leader, Hati Tehanu. These Hatiu may correspond to the Hati speaking people of Anatolia. The Hati people often refer to themselves as Kashkas or Kaskas, which 
is the same as Cush. The Hadi were probably members of the Tehanu tribe. The Tehanu was composed of various ethnic groups. One of the Tehanu tribes was identified by the Egyptians as the Hatyu or Hautyu. The Hatyu people may be related to the Hatyu, one of the Delta Tehanu tribes. Many archaeologists believe that the Tehanu people are related to the Sigru people. The Hadic language is closely related to African and Dravidian languages. The Hatti controlled the city-state of Kusara. Kusara was situated in southern Anatolia. The Kaska are remnants of the indigenous Hattian population, which was fought northward by the Indo-European Hittites. But as late as 1800 BC, Anatolia was basically settled by Hadians. The Hadians forced from southern Anatolia were among the Hyksos who conquered the Egyptian Delta. The Hyksos ruled from 1650 to 1550 BC. The new kingdom lasted from 1549 to 1292 BC. During the new kingdom, Egyptians used the name Amra as a generic name for Asians. The term Habiru was an ethnonym for one of the Asian tribes. It is clear that the Habiru and Hekikash were the same people, they would have had the same name given the fact that the new kingdom began at the end of the Hekikash dynasty. But alas, they didn't. The Haksuts were called Hekikash, while the Asians were called Am and Habiru. During the fifth dynasty of Egypt, I'll repeat, Sahui mentions that there are no people. So he referred to the Tehenu leader as Hati Tehenu. These Hatiu correspond to the Hati speaking people of Anatolia. The Hati, Hurrian people often refer to themselves as Kaskas or Kaska. This means that during the old kingdom, the term Hekakasut did not mean rulers of the foreign countries as assumed by most Egyptologists. The, ter the term meaning of Hekakasut was really rulers of the Kushites. If Hekakasut meant rulers of foreign countries, it would have been applied to every foreign country, but foreign kings were usually referred to as Wira, kings instead of Heka, which was reserved for Egyptian rulers as noted by Camille de Bassier Dyson in Foreigners and Egyptians in the late Egyptian stories. It is not a matter of Kamos called the Hyksos Amra. The Hyksos rulers refer to themselves as Heki ruler, i.e. Heki Kasut, ruler of the Kasut. Kushites. And the Egyptian texts from their various kings like Apophis made it clear that they were rulers of Kushites. Apophis maintained the tradition of the Egyptians during his rule. He is credited with encouraging his scribes to copy the priceless Egyptian texts, including the Edwin Smith Surgical Papyrus, the oldest known surgical handbook, the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus, which explains Egyptian mathematical theory, theory, and the Westcar Papyrus. These texts would have been lost to mankind except for the foresight of the Kushite pharaoh Apophis. Egyptian Kosh corresponds to Kashkas or Kaska, the name of the Hadians. The Egyptian term Hasut has three different elements, the ethnonym Kas, Kaska or Kush, plus the U, which is usually transcribed as W, which, the, which was the Egyptian plural marker, while the Egyptian T was a suffix that signified land or people. The Old Kingdom rulers of Egypt called the Kushites Haki Kasut. Since the Haksuts were called Haki Kasut instead of Habiru, proves that they were given this title because they were Kushites, like the Kushite people living in Kerma and in Nubia. Finally, stop making the false claim that there are no Egyptian texts where the Hexos call themselves Kash equal Kushite. The Egyptian textual evidence include the primary evidence of the Turin royal canon, where the Hyksos were styled Hekakasut, the same name they called other Kushites in Nubia during the Old Kingdom. During the New Kingdom, the Kushites were still being called Kash, the same name the Hatians called themselves Kuska, Kushka. The primary contemporaneous ancient Egyptian literature documents show that the Hyksos call themselves Kash, which corresponds to Kash, the Egyptian name for Kush. The first four rulers of the Hyksos called themselves Hekakashut 
on their seals and a monumental door jam from Avaris. This is primary contemporaneous ancient Egyptian literature, epigraphic documentation or evidence indicating that the Hyksos called themselves Kosh. The Hyksos worshiped Ra. Hyksos kings were proud of their Kushite origin. In the Hyksos seals, the kings wrote their names, followed by the Hyksos, kings of the Kushites, they called themselves. These seals are primary contemporaneous ancient Egyptian literature documentation indicating that the Hyksos used his name to illustrate their Kushite ancestry and relationship to the Nubian Kushites. The meaning of Kosh has to be Kush because they were, why would Hyksos refer themselves as foreign kings when they were native to the land they ruled? The Hyksos were Kushites, not Semitic speakers.